Hey guys, Easty and the Wolf here. New little toy today. It's the new Sony action camera at 4K. Does a lot of slow mo. Problem was, my uh, SD card isn't fast enough. It only does up to 30 megabits per second. So I can't really do the 4K stuff. Can't do the high bit rate slow mo stuff. So I've got a few little samples I've done with the 480p and 240 frames per second. Seeing him starting off with a little glass of stale moet that I had left over. Didn't really like the stuff anyway, only, I only drank half a glass. And uh, this is running at 240 frames. I've slowed it down four times, so it's running at 60 frames per second. Uh, my, I would have slowed it down to 30, but my video editor only slows down four times. A uh, problem with this video is I've got fluorescent lights and they run slower than 200, they run, they'll probably run at 110 hertz, same as electricity. So that a lot of flickering in this area, but not to worry because I've not recorded everything in this area. Again, a second shot of the Moet. And I thought I would try a little bit of ice shattering. I got a few ice cubes and bashed them. And then in the slow mo. Try and show you a few times there. The, the interesting bit where it's exploding. <laughs> Say so it's quite good when you f when you pause it. It's actually like a photo every frame. It's all in focus. It's not blurred like you would use some kind of program to create slow mo. The the lens on the camera is quite large as well, so it lets a lot of light in. So that's really good for the high frame rate also. I only got the camera today so I thought I'd do what I could. Hopefully I'll do a lot more interesting tests with it. Definitely looking forward to how it does 4K in 30 frames a second. Kind of a tricky overlay shot there. I like that. I was messing around. Now I got my dog, the wolf I should say. And I was giving him some treats, which he always loves. See, there he's giving me four. In slow mo. Now I'm giving him a treat. The menu system of the camera is quite intricate. There are three different modes. The car, the camera runs in normal MP4 and then it runs in a Sony, a Sony standard called SAXC, which is a high bit rate. It's kind of raw, it's like a raw photography for video. It takes a very high speed. STD card, so you really want to look for the U symbol on the STD card, so that should be like a U1 or a, the newer ones or U3. I think it's class 10, but there's two different speed ratings, so the U's are the high speed, and the class is what they've been conventionally using, so you want class 10, U1 or U3. We're recording the high bit rate, 4K stuff. One pretty cool thing with the camera also, it works, it has Wi-Fi, so it can do the normal live view to your phone. And it has, there, there is a device you can buy to live view as well. You can also stream with it live to the internet if you ever wanted to set that up for any reason. You could set it up on Ustream, so if you've got Wi-Fi close by, you can do that. You can also obviously know, as you can with the other cameras, you can do live view setups. I certainly didn't choose the best conditions to test this out, but I uh, guess it shows the what it's like in bad conditions. If you end up in low light, when you want to do some high frame rate, slow low stuff. 
and he's still getting treats. He really enjoyed this this evening. It's his kind of test. I was using a false light here that I have my DSLR camera. Just try and see how it works. It works a lot better with the false light. I used to be a big Contour Ready? fan and I owned all their cameras uh, until they went out of business. I know they've come back now. I'm, I'm actually a better... I prefer, prefer the kind of pen camera format than the, the square cameras for, for quite a few different reasons. I also think Sony is going to do a really good job with the software. Already their app and, the, and their software they have seems pretty good, pretty mature. I know a few people put the battery down because it's more expensive than the competition, but I think it's less than 8% longer. For me, that's like worth it. I mean, uh, an extra 20 bucks is 4% of the price of a camera and you're getting an extra 30% battery life. Makes a huge difference. I don't know if some of the performs that much better. Here you go. A little bit of outside before it went dark. The camera actually comes with a, a waterproof case. It's good for 10 meters, I think, 30 feet. And the thing about that, it has it has speaker ports in it, and they have a little waterproof, I guess, diaphragm on the speaker port, which means it's not good for real deep diving. So below 30, 30 feet or below 10 meters, those speaker ports must fail. But you can replace the front on it. I think it's thirty dollars, or twenty euro, twenty pounds for a, a a replacement door for the front. If you're going to take it diving, you just clip it off and put that on, and it doesn't have the speaker ports. So it also seems it's flat, so you don't get the distortion in the water. I think the the normal ones curve for protection and light. Generally, when you want to use the camera outside, you can use this case and it'll protect it. If you can go use it under water in shallow water. The, the, the camera on its own, without that case, it has two ports for, for screwing things onto it. It comes with two mounts. One of them's a curved sticky mount, one of them's a straight mount. It comes with a little bracket. You can buy your external accessories and clip it onto things. So I tried to run away from him, but didn't really succeed. He's pretty fast. Well, that's a very quick last minute video. I thought I'd just upload a couple of slow-mos. If anybody's looking at buying it, it might be interesting to see. And definitely I'll be trying some uh, other stuff on the motorcycle. Maybe some scuba diving if I'm lucky. Kayaking, if that's any interest. I'll talk myself into buying a drone one day so I can be a voyeur. <laughs> see you soon, bye-bye.